welcome to the class uh, if you remember in last class at the end we discussed uh, absolute maximum in an interval in today lecture we will be mainly discussing monotonic functions and uh, local extremum and then we will move towards optimization problem okay so let's start with monotonic function monotonic function which basically collectively it's a group of two things one is increasing function and the other one is decreasing function so all together monotonic function can be defined as a function which is either increasing or decreasing collectively we call it monotonic function and then separately we define increasing function as a function will be increasing in an interval a b if for all real numbers in that interval you take any real numbers in that interval such that x1 is less than x2 implies that f of x1 is less than or equal to f of x2 this is the symbol we'll be using for increasing what does this mean this statement uh, means that if you increase x when we say x1 is less than x2 for all x that means if you are increasing x if i could use simple a symbol for x increasing x like that if you say x is increasing when you say x is less than x1 is less than x2 that means you are increasing x because you see x2 is greater than x1 and uh, corresponding value of y is also increasing y is equal to f of x keeping in mind so if you increase the value of y sorry value of x corresponding of y, value of y is also increasing we say the function is increasing if we see geometrically let's suppose we have a function whose graph is something like that here so you see if you increase the values of x means if you are going in the positive direction in this direction that's the increasing direction of x values are increasing here what is going on in the graph you see the graph is also going upward that is going in the upward direction so as we increase x in this case right y is increasing in this case so in this interval whatever the interval is if you start from here and going up to here this function is increasing there because as you x uh, increase the y is also increasing the same uh, statement we can use uh, in this way as well you may write if x1 is greater than x2 if x1 is greater than x2 that means if you are decreasing x implies f of x1 is also greater than or equal to f of x2 when these two one these two samples are same smaller and smaller greater and greater in this case what do we do we say x is decreasing corresponding y is also decreasing so the function will still be increasing you see that's the same sample we will be using later on as well so in this case if you see as we decrease x it means if you move in the negative direction right if you move in the negative direction from here the graph is going down you see the graph is going in this direction so you as you x move from right to left that is x is decreasing you must know that when we say x is decreasing 
that means you are going to positive direction that is going x is going towards plus infinity plus infinity doesn't mean that we are approaching to infinity that means you are going in that direction minus infinity sorry not plus infinity and if you say x is increasing and that's part we say that x will be moving towards plus infinity keeping this thing in mind if x is increasing corresponding y is increasing or x is decreasing implies f of x are also decreasing the function will be known as a mono increasing function we consider two types of increasing function uh, one is uh, known as steadily increasing the definition we have here is uh, steadily increasing because there might be some equality as well if you are having greater symbol in the function as well in that case we say it's a uh, strictly increasing you can level this one as This one is labeled as steadily increasing. But if we have x1 is less than x2, implies f of x1 that is less than f of x2 if there is no equality involved in it so we say the function is strictly increasing later on we don't care about either it's steadily or strictly it doesn't matter it could be either one and the same thing for uh, decreasing as well we say a function is said to be uh, decreasing a function is said to be decreasing in this interval a b if you increase x what happens the value of y are decreasing x1 is less than x2 implies f of x1 is greater than or equal to f of x2 or we say x1 is greater than x2 implies f of x1 is less than or equal to f of x2 these two symbols will be different if this is smaller this will be greater uh, if this is greater this become then smaller accordingly if we talk about uh, steadily so we are having greater equal or less equal but if you talk about uh, strictly, in that case, we'll be having greater only or smaller only. Geometrically, as I explained in that case, an increasing case, if you see, if we have a function like that, so in this case, you see, if you are increasing x, increasing x, as I said, the direction will be in the plus infinity direction. And the graph is going in which direction? The y this is x, x is going towards plus infinity or increasing, y is what? It is decreasing, you see. So the function is decreasing. Or the other direction, if you take x in this direction, that's the decreasing direction, while y is what, you see? y is going upward, so the function values are increasing. So y is increasing in this case. So this function, you see, this a function having this type of graph this is decreasing in this interval a function may be increasing in one interval and decreasing in another interval as well we may have function like that this function is increasing up to this point then it start decreasing here 
decreasing, 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 and so on, and then it start increasing, and so on, then decreasing, then increasing, and so on. The graph going upward from geometry, the graph going upward, it will be increasing, and the graph going downward, it will be decreasing. So this function is increasing here. It is decreasing here. Again, increasing here then decreasing and then increasing so sometimes we are interested to check whether a function is increasing or decreasing an interval sometimes we want to find the interval where the function is increasing or decreasing so you would find this interval from here to here the values of x where the function is increasing or maybe you would find an interval where the function is decreasing we will be considering these two types of concept. Any question? Okay. So, uh, checking uh, monotonicity of a function by using this definition it's not that much easy to do it using this definition right this is the basic definition used for increasing and decreasing function because it's a for all x1 x2 in that interval okay so for all there will be infinite real numbers between two numbers a and b it is not possible to check it for every possible value in a b such that x1 is less than x2 implies f of x1 is less than or equal to f of x2 that's not possible for that what we have a corollary this is known as a first derivative test and it states that if a function derivative is greater than zero in an interval it will be increasing and if a derivative is negative in an interval it will be decreasing. You see from here, if f dash x is greater than 0 for all x in that interval, again, it's for all x, but you will simply check the general concept, the general behavior of function in that interval, whether it is positive or negative. So its derivative is positive in an interval implies function is increasing. And if its derivative is uh, negative in an interval, we say the function is uh, decreasing. OK. So let's consider this function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 12x minus 5. You need to find the in interval where the function is increasing or decreasing. So we need to find intervals in which f is increasing and decreasing. So the first step is, you see, we need to find its derivative. And then we check where the derivative is negative or positive. OK. So if we find its derivative, that is 3x square minus 12, which can be factorized in this way. And then we would find interval where this function is increasing or decreasing. Okay. So first we find the critical points where the function's derivative is either 0 or infinity. Okay. So the function's derivative is 0 at minus 2 and plus 2. You must remember if uh, uh, we, we have done that in last lecture that a body will change its direction at a point where time is zero it may change direction at a point where time is uh, where where velocity is zero velocity and derivative is zero so if from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing it is changing direction so a point at which derivative is zero will be change a point of maybe a point of changing direction okay so how do we do that? You see, uh, later on, then it says uh, we are finding these intervals from minus infinity to minus 2 and minus 2 to 2. In this interval, the function is what? Uh, positive or negative accordingly. And then we make it a, a decision about it. So how do we do that? Let me explain that to you. We had a derivative. Uh, Factorize is f dash x is equal to, I think that's 4 into x minus 2 and x plus 2. Uh, 
I'm not sure exactly if I have written that rightly. Yeah, it is three, sorry. It is not four. But doesn't matter. It is a positive quantity, so it will not affect the sine of the uh, function derivative. So we go for sine pattern here. It's a very important thing. sine pattern of the derivative from which we can directly measure the arc, we can directly find the interval where function is increasing or decreasing. And then we would use the same thing for measuring or finding uh, relative max or relative min. I may not be able to draw a straight line here, so just try to understand what I'm doing. That's the point zero here. D draw first the critical points. This is two here, and this is minus two here. Look into it carefully. Okay, I will draw a vertical line here. It's optional, you may or may not, just to separate the different regions. Now we consider the first factor here. And you could write that, that here. This is x minus 2. You must remember that x minus 2, you must know that, x minus 2 will be greater than 0 if x is greater than 2. Right? Which means for values of x greater than 2, greater means to the right side of 2, the function value will be what? It will be positive. Means x minus 2 will be positive when x is greater than 2, while it will be negative when x is less than 2. The interval where x minus 2 is positive or negative can be seen in this sign pattern. For x greater than 2, it is positive. For x less than 2, it is negative. And then we take the next factor, x plus 2. So again, x plus 2 is greater than 0. When x is greater than minus 2. So in this case, to the right of minus 2, it is positive, positive. And it is negative to the left. We are interested in the sign of the product, so we simply write f dash x. which is obviously this quantity, we have here 3 into this one, this one, and this one. So we multiply the signs here, so minus into minus, that will be plus. Plus into minus is minus here, and plus into plus is plus as well. So from here we can directly observe that function is increasing here, function is decreasing in this interval and increasing in this interval. So this interval is what? This is x less than minus 2. This interval is x between minus 2 and 2. And this interval is x greater than 2. So from here we would say that f is increasing. We are ever derivative is positive. So you would say f is increasing for x less than minus 2. Or x greater than 2. We may write for all x belongs to minus 2 to in minus infinity to minus 2 
union two to infinity. You can write in this form as well. And f in is decreasing when x is between minus 2 and 2. Or we can write x belongs to open interval minus 2 to 2. That's why we have uh, this thing in previous slide that f will be increasing and decreasing in this interval accordingly where we can we can make some condition i hope it's clear we are having a quadratic derivative so this can be done by completing square as well if you don't want to use sine pattern it's okay you can use computing square technique as well but if you have a cubic uh, derivative in that case uh, you have to go for sand pattern because you cannot uh, find increasing or decreasing interval in that case by using completing square method any question Do you have any question? Let me go back. So now let's come towards uh, go back and I left one definition there that was about uh, relative extremes, local minima and local maxima. Once you understood the concept of increasing and decreasing, it is very easy to, uh, to find local extremes. If you remember, I explained absolute extreme is what that's the largest value in a domain or in an interval, whatever. That is the largest value in the whole domain. And absolute minimum was defined as largest value, sorry, smallest value in the whole domain. That was absolute minimum. While a uh, relative or we may call it local extremes can be defined as local maximum is the largest value in a small domain. If a function has a largest value in a small domain, if you consider this example you see there, the geometry, this point you see here the function has maximum value in this interval you see from here to here but this is not absolute you see there is maximum value available here so this is not maximum okay but this is uh, obviously local maximum if you come to this point this is local minimum here because this value is uh, smaller than all values. This is absolute minimum. This is absolute maximum. This is local minimum. This is local maximum. This is local minimum. This is local maximum. This is local minimum as well. Kisi bhi point pe agar ek function ki value jo hai wo ek specific interval mein sabse kam ho. या सबसे ज्यादा हो तो उसको फिर हम लोकल एक्सट्रीम कहते हैं सबसे कम है उस स्मॉल इंटरवल में पूरे डोमेन की हम बात नहीं कर रहे एक नेबरिंग इंटरवल जितना भी छोटा क्यों ना हो उस पर क्या कहते हैं लोकल मिनिमम और मैक्सिमम अकॉर्डिंगली कहते हैं अगर यहां पर थोड़ा सा मैं कुछ मैट्रिक्स ड्रा कर दूं तो इसी बहुत स्मॉल इंटरवल ही क्यों ना हो लेट्स सपोज यहां पर यहां से स्टार्ट हो गया फंक्शन का ग्राफ जो है and then it moved there aur yahan par thode se uh, uske liye bhi aise ho gaya bend ho gaya fir wapas chala gaya aise 
and then we come down here or something. So at this point, you see, if you could see this point, it's a very small interval in which the value is the maximum. So this is local maximum. Again, in this interval, for a very small length, the value is minimum. So this is local minimum as well. At this point, the value is largest than all values. In this small interval, you can find the small interval. It could be this one as well, but we don't consider that. We will consider a small interval where the value is maximum. We consider a small interval where the value is minimum. Now, this value is local and absolute both, relative and absolute both. This is R and A both because this is the large, smallest value as well. OK. Well, if you stop here at this point, at this point, you see the value is local max as well and global max as well, or absolute max and relative max as well. At this point, we are having maximum value, while at this point, we are having minimum value, absolute minimum. We are also having maximum at this point, local max. This is local max. We are having local min at this point. This is local max. This, these are also local extremes as well, our relative extreme as well. So that's the difference between uh, absolute and relative. OK, that's good. Now, how do we check where a function has local max or local min at a point? OK. Absolute are always local, while local can be absolute as well. You can you could see from the graph. Okay, you see this is local. Let me go there to another point. This is uh, local max as well, and this is absolute max as well. This is local minimum as well as absolute minimum. But local is not always absolute. OK, so now uh, we are coming towards the uh, first derivative test for examining the local extreme. So be careful about it. Let's suppose this is the point where we want to investigate its local extreme value. See, at this point, either in this specific case, derivative is zero because we are having smooth turn here. F dash will be zero, which is known as critical point. We discussed that in last lecture. Critical point is a point where derivative is what? Either zero or infinity. At this point, you see there is a corner, so this is also a critical point, but f dash is undefined now. Undefined means it could be infinity, it could be uh, left hand derivative is not equal to right hand derivative. Okay. So uh, at a critical point, usually we may have a local max. I'm using a word may have. There is possibility that we have a critical point, and at that point, we neither have local max or local min. If it has a local min, a local max, so you see to the left side of that critical point, the function is increasing. You may see the graph is increasing, while on the right side, it is decreasing. The same thing, 
if we see here to the left of this critical point the function is increasing while to the right it is decreasing so at any point when a function has local max to the left it will be increasing while to the right it will be decreasing at this position at this point the function will have local max we talk about only local max i will explain absolute later on okay and if you consider a minimum point here that's the minimum point you see the function is local minimum at this point it could be absolute as well you don't talk about it to the left the function is decreasing while to the right the function is increasing if a function is decreasing in decreasing to the left of critical point and increasing to the right of critical point we say the function has local minimum okay so let's suppose that's the critical point at this position and to the left the function is decreasing while to the right the function is increasing it can be seen from this as well that we must have a local minimum but at some point you see if we consider this point at c1 this is also a critical point but the function is increasing from the left and it is increasing on the right as well it was increasing on the left increasing on the right so in this case the function has no extreme value so if at a critical point the function is increasing on the left the function is increasing on the right as well so in this case we have no local extreme while if the function is decreasing to the left if we consider point c5 so it is decreasing to the left and it is decreasing to the right as well in that case what happens the function will have again no local extreme decreasing at a critical point to the left at critical point and it's still decreasing on the right as well so at this position in these two cases the function will have no local extreme okay mathematically in this case f dash will be positive function increasing f dash is positive decreasing f dash is positive negative sorry so if to the left of a critical point derivative is positive and to the right derivative is negative we say the function has local maximum at that point and if derivative is negative to the left and positive to the right in that case it has local minimum at that point and if positive on both sides are negative on both side so we say the function has no extreme values at that point right so that is a, a, sec, a first trial test for observing the local max or local min of a function that's what i explain in the graph let's say f dash changes from negative to positive at c then f has a local maximum at c we are having four cases left increasing right increasing see left increasing right decreasing local max left decreasing right increasing local min left increasing right increasing no maximum and left decreasing and right decreasing no maximum the same thing is here but that is now written in a, in words f dash changes from negative to positive means f dash is negative and then it is positive that is decreasing and then increasing 
we have local minimum. If this changes from positive to negative, positive increasing, negative decreasing. So ne positive increasing on the left, negative decreasing on the right, the function will have local max. And if f dash doesn't change sign at C, on both sides it is positive or on both sides it is negative, we say the function has no local extreme. So let's consider uh, this example here. Find the critical point of the function f of x equal to x power 1 by 3 into x minus 4. If you multiply this, we got x power 4 by 3 minus 4 x power 1 by 3. And then we find its derivative because first you would find its critical points, right? So the critical point of this function can be found by differentiating first. So its derivative is a very simple applying power rule. That is 4 into x minus 1 divided by 3 into x power 2 by 3. So this derivative will be 0. We equate this to 0 for critical point or infinity, you would see. So this derivative is 0 when x is equal to 1. Those values where denominator is 0 will basically give you what? Critical point. And those values where denominator is 0 also give you what? Critical point. So, derivative will be infinity if x is equal to 0. So, the critical points are 0 and 1. Okay. So, let me take this function from here to next slide and then I explain it here. Let me just clear this for future. Okay, uh, let me do that here. Okay. Where is the cursor gone here? Okay, uh, let's go to the next slide. You should remember that derivative is uh, that was something 4 by 3 possibly if I am right x minus 1 divided by x power 2 by 3. Okay, that's right. So we found the critical points. One critical point was 0 and the other one was 1. They are CP. So what do we do? We draw a straight line now. It might not be a straight line. We assume that it's a straight line. And that's point zero. This is point one. We are drawing sign pattern for it. As I said earlier, it's better to draw vertical line with a just to divide the regions, but it's not uh, necessary. We first take a sign pattern of this factor x minus one you know x minus 1 will be greater than 0 if x is greater than 1. So to the right of 1, this will be positive, plus, 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 and so on, while to the left, it will be negative. Whereas the second factor is x power 2 by 3. You will take all factors, either they are in the numerator or in the denominator, doesn't matter. But uh, if you see, it is x power 2 by 3, x power 2 by 3, which may be written as x power 1 by 3 square. And square is always positive, 
so it will be positive everywhere positive here zero at x equal to zero it's positive everywhere and then we take the product or the quotient whatever do we function there we so we simply write f dash x <coughs> division and multiplication dono mein hamare paas kya hota hai sin multiply hoga so that is minus 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 this is uh, minus 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 and then this is plus 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 and so on so the function is decreasing here to the left of zero it is increasing to the left of zero decreasing to the left of zero as well so it is decreasing on both sides you see negative and negative on both sides of this critical point zero <coughs> and similarly if you look to the critical point 1 okay so it is decreasing to the left while increasing to the right okay so in this case no local extreme at x equal to 0 while from the geometry here you can see it is uh, uh, making a well something like that is something like that so whenever we have this type of shape it will be minimum agar aapko ye condition bhool bhi jaye tab bhi aap yahan se kar sakte hain agar is tarah se banega to yahan par max hoga agar is tarah se banega so there will be local minimum so you see that we are having like this and then this so this is local minimum if somebody ask you what about absolute in this case so the function has no absolute sorry this is minimum not maximum this is local minimum now whether this local minimum is absolute or not okay maybe ask whether this local is absolute or not usko main baad mein explain karta hu i explain that in a while that how do we check it whether a function has absolute or neither absolute there are three cases one case we already discussed that if you have a, a function in an interval okay so in that case we may have uh, both maximum and minimum in the whole diven sometimes we have uh, neither max nor min there is case we may have a case where only absolute maximum we may have a case where only absolute minimum and there is a case when there is no absolute minimum or maximum let me discuss that those cases as well तो साइन पैटर्न जो है ये काफी इंपॉर्टेंट है साइन पैटर्न से आपको डायरेक्टली पता चल जाता है कि कौन से पॉइंट पे लोकल मैक्स है और कौन से पॉइंट पे लोकल मिनिमम है इट्स वेरी सिंपल फ्रॉम द साइन पैटर्न सो मस्ट वर्क ऑन साइन पैटर्न टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड द सेम साइन पैटर्न कैन बी यूज फॉर चेकिंग वेदर इट्स एब्सोल्यूट मैक्स आर एब्सोल्यूट मैन तो लेट मी गो देर नाउ अगेन explain that thing it's a very important thing and a bit tricky as well absolute ke liye ki hum sign pattern ko kaise use karte hain let me discuss few cases then mera ye criteria hum discuss kar rahe hain for examining absolute extreme in the whole domain in last lecture we discussed absolute extreme in intervals in dono mein fark hai
Okay, let me draw your matrix first. We are we have local absolute marks or something. So if we have a graph like that in the whole domain for a function f of x, maybe like that, and then it goes down up to infinity. Keeping in mind, we are not considering the inter uh, the the whole domain. Sorry, uh, closed interval. We are considering the whole domain. Right. So in this case, you see that the function has local, extreme, and absolute as well. At this point, it is a local minimum. At this point, we are having a local max as well as absolute as well. You see, that's the absolute one, and this is local as well. But there is no absolute minimum in this case. So that is the case when we have only absolute max. We have only absolute max. अच्छा अब अपने ग्राफ से तो पता चल जाता है कि इसकी एब्सोल्यूट मैक्स है या नहीं है, ठीक है? लेकिन अगर आपको कोई फंक्शन दिया हुआ है, फंक्शन इज़ डिफाइन्ड by a formula it is defined explicitly in that case how would you check it you don't need to draw a graph for it but if you see the sign pattern for it will be what the extreme left critical point this is a critical point right this is critical point to the left of extreme left critical point the function is increasing you see that jo bilkul akhri left extreme pe jo आपके पास क्रिटिकल पॉइंट आता है उसके लेफ्ट पे क्या है द फंक्शन इज इंक्रीजिंग वाइल टू द राइट ऑफ एक्सट्रीम राइट क्रिटिकल पॉइंट ये क्रिटिकल पॉइंट है ये क्रिटिकल पॉइंट है ये क्रिटिकल पॉइंट है दीज आर थ्री क्रिटिकल पॉइंट दिस इज द लेफ्ट वन एक्सट्रीम लेफ्ट क्रिटिकल पॉइंट एंड दिस इज द एक्सट्रीम राइट क्रिटिकल पॉइंट तो इफ द फंक्शन इज इंक्रीजिंग टू द एक्सट्रीम लेफ्ट एंड डिक्रीजिंग टू द एक्सट्रीम राइट we say the function will have only absolute max the sign pattern will be like that you see positive positive let's suppose that's the extreme right critical point and then we have anything you might have positive or something something blah 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 whatever is going on there we don't care we don't care we don't care right and once we reach to the extreme right critical point another critical point here This is C1. Let's suppose this is C2. Whatever it is, it could be positive or negative. We don't mention it here. But as far as you reach to this point, C3, let's suppose, and we are having negative sign here. In this case, the function will have ex uh, only absolute max. There will be no absolute minimum in this case, and there will be ex absolute max. Okay, if we have this case, if that's the, the other way round, if geometry is something like that, <clears throat> right? In this case, you see the function is decreasing to the extreme left and increasing to the extreme right. so in that case we will be having minus 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 here we don't know whatever is going how many critical points in between them and what is going on we don't care but once you reach the last critical point it becomes start positive in that case the function will have only absolute minimum that is for absolute minimum only and the case uh, when we have no absolute extreme something like that we may have like that we see ye ja raha it is going towards infinity 
it is going towards minus infinity. So there is no absolute minimum or no absolute maximum in this case. When we say maximum is infinity and minimum is in minus infinity, so we say the function has no absolute extreme in that case. And you see, in this case, extreme left function is decreasing, extreme right function is decreasing. So we have minus, 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 minus here. Whatever is going on in there, we don't care. And then at the extreme right, it's again negative, negative, negative. And similarly, for the same thing, there is no absolute extreme in that case. No absolute extreme, no absolute max, no absolute min. So I would simple write absolute extreme. In this case, we have only absolute minimum. There is no maximum. And if we have plus here, Whatever is going on in there, we don't care. Again, as I said earlier, then to the extreme right, we are also having plus sign there. So in this case, again, we have a graph will be something like that in this case. Geometry will be this thing, going this way, coming down, and then going this way. So that's the concept used for if extreme left is plus, extreme right is minus, only absolute max. Extreme left is negative and extreme right is positive, only absolute minimum. And if extreme right and left both have same sign, there will be no absolute extreme. Keeping in mind, we are considering here functions Where is the cursor gone here? We are considering functions whose domain are complete set of real numbers, minus infinity to plus infinity. You are getting right. If f is defined in the whole domain, but if f is uh, Defined in some particular interval, semi infinity, up case Okay. And then in that case, you will define on one end. Let's suppose if we have, uh, let me get rid of it. Okay. Let's suppose we are having a function f uh, defined on the closed interval, semi infinity interval. Sorry. It's something starting from a and going to infinity. Okay, so in that case, you will basically define on the or uh, 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 explain on the extreme right only, extreme right critical point because the sign pattern will be starting from this position and that will be blocked. This part is not included in the sign pattern, and then you go in this direction, something like this. So we again say anything going on here, we don't care anything going on here we don't care we only care about this one this part sign if it is negative okay or it is positive and so on 
if it is negative, so you will decide is we, we don't care about here, even though if it is positive here. If this is another critical point, and in this part, it is positive. Most of the students make a mistake here. If this is positive, right, and this is negative. So by using the whole interval concept, this should be, this function should have absolute max right and in this case it's also okay but if this is negative where is the cursor gone again here if this is negative and this is also negative by using that concept i explained earlier because extreme left pe hamare paas negative aa raha hai extreme right pe we are have also negative so both same sign there should not be any extreme value okay there shouldn't be any absolute x but that's not the case you will not consider this thing here right we don't consider this one we only talk consider or make a decision about this one if this is negative okay this will be having absolute max if this is positive it will be having absolute min so we will be only making decision on the right extreme right end in the sign pattern okay and if we have function defined on this interval it is starting from minus infinity to some number a in that case you will decide on the left end then only We'll make decision on left end. फिर आपने right end को नहीं देखना कि वहाँ पे sign positive है या negative है. Any question? Okay, so let's move towards exercise then. Okay. Let me go back and so in exercise uh, 4.3 from question 1 to 14 you see you can see this question in book as well they say what are the critical points of f on what intervals f increasing or decreasing and at what points if any does f assume local maximum and local minimum So derivatives are given in question one to fourteen. You don't need to find a derivative. You would directly find the critical points, and uh, obviously you would check increasing or decreasing. So which one should I do? You can ask me any question from question one to fourteen. In fact, you do question one to twelve, thirteen, fourteen, or all right. Question eight. Okay. Right. When I go back to the presentation, why do you ask question? F dash x is given as in question eight. f dash x that is equal to x minus 1 x minus 2 x plus 4 Divided by x plus one, x minus three. So critical points are. Hmm. 
they are minus 4 minus 1 2 and 3 those points where derivative is 0 at x equal to 2 derivative is 0 x equal to minus 4 derivative is 0 x equal to minus 1 derivative is infinity x equal to 3 derivative is undefined so these are the critical points कोई मुश्किल चीज नहीं है एक लंबी से स्ट्रेट लाइन ड्रा करें ओके स्टार्ट फ्रॉम हियर गो देयर सो लेट्स सपोज दिस इज माइनस 4 फॉर मी दिस इज माइनस 1 फॉर मी दिस इज 2 फॉर मी and 3 for me. As I said earlier, you will draw vertical lines just to avoid confusion. So first we take x minus 2, doesn't matter the sequence. So x minus 2, you know it is positive for x greater than 2. Okay, it is negative to the left. And then we have uh, x plus 4. x plus 4 negative to the left of minus 4 and positive elsewhere. Then we are moving towards x plus 1. So x plus 1 is uh, negative to the left of minus 1. And positive to the right. x minus 3, it is negative to the left of 3 now and positive to the right of 3. But we are interested in their products. So f dash x. Minus, 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 minus will be plus. So we are having plus, 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 plus. While this is minus, plus, minus, minus is minus. Minus, plus, plus, minus. That is plus. plus 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 minus is minus and this is again plus 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 so in this interval for x less than minus 4 the function is increasing decreasing decreasing increasing increasing decreasing and so on so what are the intervals where the function is increasing that is x less than minus 4 x between minus 1 and 2 and x greater than 3 okay you're simple right f is increasing For all x belongs to which interval? Less than minus 4. So going from minus infinity to minus 4. Union 
from minus 1 to 2. Union 3 to infinity. And F will be decreasing. X belongs to the remaining two intervals where derivative is negative. That is minus 4 to minus 1. And then from uh, 2 to 4, 2 to 3, sorry. And from here, you see, we are having a, a, a sort of mountain here, a cliff here. So that is max, local max. You see, we are having well here. So that is uh, a ditch. You can say it's a minimum. This is again maximum. And this is here minimum. What about absolute? On the extreme left, we are having plus sign. On the extreme right, we are having plus sign. So it means this function has no absolute extreme. Na yaha par maximum hai, or na hi iska minimum hai. Absolute ki baat ho rahi hai. Local hai iske, like I said, koi absolute nahi hai. Is it clear? Okay. Sir. Yeah. Sir, what your point up? F increase or at minus infinity to minus four. Sorry, to repeat. Sorry. Union. You see that if you minus 4 ke left, pe dekh lena, you see left of the minus 4. Let me have a pointer. The left of minus 4, this is positive, positive, positive. It is going to infinity, minus infinity, obviously. So from minus infinity to minus 4, the function derivative is positive. So it is increasing in this interval. Then between minus 1 and 2, derivative is what? Positive, so it is increasing. And then from 3 onward, it is what? Positive, so it is increasing. So in trouble, where derivative is positive here, from here that sign pattern, you will see it, that is increasing. And wherever the sign pattern derivative is negative, it will be decreasing. Okay, so you'll do the rest of the question as well. Uh, in question 19 to question uh, 40, again the same thing, find the open intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing, and then identify the function's local and absolute extreme values in this case, if any, and saying where they occur. Now, functions are given in this case. In previous case, derivatives were given, but now we are given functions. Taki Kahani same hai. Increasing, decreasing check karna hai, or is ki maximum local or absolute of dono hai. So again, consume a karlu. I'm doing 34, 30, 33, 34, one of them, but you can ask uh, up to question 30 possibly. Let me do question number 29. Okay, question 29. Where f of x is given. Three by two x power four.
minus x power 6. Okay. So first we find its derivative f dash t, f dash x, sorry, that will be 6x cube minus 6x power 5. Six x cube can be taken common out of it. We get one minus x square, which could be factorized as six x cube one minus x one plus x. So critical points are in this case zero, minus one, and plus one. Because this derivative will be zero when x is zero, it will be zero when x is one, it will be zero when x is minus one. So we go for sign pattern. This is suppose x equal to 0, this is 1, this is minus 1. We may draw vertical lines. We first go for x cube. So x cube is You know, it is positive to the right of 0. When x is positive, x cube is also positive. And when x is negative, x cube is also negative. So that's a sign pattern of x cube. Then we take 1 minus x. 1 minus x is negative to the left. And it is positive to the right of 1. Similarly, 1 plus x. One plus x is again positive to the right of minus one. And negative to the left. And as I said earlier, we are interested in the product or in the derivative. So if dash will be minus plus minus is min plus 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 this is minus 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 plus 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 minus 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 minus. So increasing where to where from minus infinity to minus 1 increasing from minus 1 to 0 it is uh, decreasing decreasing here as well and from 0 to 1 again increasing and then from 1 to infinity it is decreasing Let me make some correction here It is increasing and this is decreasing. 
So I hope you could write directly the interval that increasing wear to wear from minus infinity to four or oh, minus one, sorry. And then from zero to one, the function is increasing, whereas decreasing from minus one to zero. and then one to infinity. You see here local max. Here we have local min. And we have max as well. So these are all locals. What about absolute? You see from the extreme left it is uh, positive and on the extreme right it is negative. It means the function has local, uh, sorry, absolute. It is absolute max. And that will be where? That will be either at minus 1 in dono local mesehi koi ek absolute hoga. One of these local will be absolute. It could be both of them. You will check the value of function at these points. So if you put x equal to minus 1 there, it is 3 by 2 minus 1. And if you put x equal to 1 there, we are still getting 3 by 2 minus 1, which is 1 by 2. Okay, so at this, these local max are also absolute max. Which are at x equal to plus minus 1. Because dono pe value same hai. Agar dono pe value different hoti. 1 over minus 1 pe jo maximum value is as if you are the same, then you can say that the two are absolute max, the value of y1 by 2. If you are having different values at x equal to 1 and minus 1, in that case, the maximum value will be the absolute maximum. In the two, the value of the value will be the value of the value of the value of the absolute max. Let's suppose if it was uh, 2 at x equal to minus 1 and 3 at x equal to 1, so you would say the absolute max is at x equal to one, those body value bogey. Is it clear? Let me do question number thirty three or thirty four. Which one is? Let me do thirty four, right? Okay, let me do question number 33. x under root 8 minus x square. I'm just explaining it, the rest you will do yourself. Asan hojayega. I said if I got steps, what are you doing? In 33, we are having function f of x is equal to something x into under root 8 minus x square. So you would first find its domain. And you see for domain, whatever you got inside a square root, that must be greater than 0. So we say x 8 minus x square should be greater than or equal to 0, which means x square should be less than or equal to 8 which means x should be between minus 2 under root 2 
एंड टू हंड्रेड रूट टू ये वही रूल हमने यूज किया कि एक्स स्क्वायर अगर लेस देन ए स्क्वायर है तो फिर क्या होगा यू मस्ट रिमेंबर दिस रूल माइनस ए विल बी लेस देन आर इक्वल टू एक्स विल बी लेस देन आर इक्वल टू प्लस ए अब अगर आप इस फंक्शन को देख लें तो इसका डोमेन हमारे पास ये आ गया जो कि एक क्लोज इंटरवल वाली कहानी है तो जिसने हमने पिछले लेक्चर में किया था पहले सी पी फाइंड करो ठीक है जो भी सी पी आते हैं इसके डायवेटिव से उसके बाद फिर फंक्शन की वैल्यूज फाइंड करो द लार्जेस्ट विल बी द लार्जेस्ट एंड स्मॉलेस्ट विल बी द स्मॉलेस्ट वाले ऑब्वियसली विल गो फॉर साइन पैटर्न एज वेल लेकिन अब ये साइन पैटर्न आपको कहाँ से कहाँ तक होगा माइनस टू अंडर रूट टू से लेकर प्लस टू अंडर रूट टू तक जाएगा और जो क्रिटिकल पॉइंट इस इंटरवल के अंदर होगा वही आपने लेना है और साइन पैटर्न से एब्सोल्यूट मैक्स टर्म डायरेक्ट फाइंड कर सकते हैं वाइल फॉर लोकल एक्सट्रीम यू वुड नीड साइन पैटर्न तो गो फॉर साइन पैटर्न विद इन दिस इंटरवल कीपिंग इन माइंड इधर नहीं जाना बाहर आपने नहीं कंसिडर करना Neither to the left of minus two hundred root two, nor to the right of two hundred root two. Okay, so I'm doing thirty-four. So let me get rid of this. Okay. 34 question is uh, f of x is equal to x square into under root 5 minus x. x square under root 5 minus x so whenever we have square root there is always a matter of interval domain sorry so in this case domain will be what we will take here 5 minus x is greater than or equal to 0 it means x will be less than or equal to 5 so in this case domain is what minus infinity is less than x is less than or equal to 5 now it is the problem when we have one sided infinite interval jo maine last mein baat ki thi the rest is straight forward you will find derivative first so f dash x is two x under root five minus x Minus x square divided by two under root five minus x. I applied product rule. If you take LCM of it, that will be two under root five minus x. If you multiply this here, that becomes four x into five minus x. Minus x square, which could further be simplified as 
twenty x minus five x square. divided by 2 into blah blah then we can take uh, what we can take 5x common that will be 4 minus x divided by 2 under root Oh, I guess I'm all I are. I can't go to question here now. Let me do that. I will keep this thing then. I can must log in. I am at the minus again. माइनस ये 5 माइनस x की डेरिवेटिव की वजह से आ रहा है मैं डायरेक्ट कर दिया ये स्टेप अगर आप खुद करेंगे तो प्लस लगा के फिर इसके बाद माइनस लगा के आप वन बाय वन स्टेप करेंगे आई हैव डन इट डायरेक्टली दैट्स व्हाई आई पुट माइनस देयर माइनस बिकॉज़ ऑफ डेरिवेटिव ऑफ 5 माइनस x अगेन व्हिच इज माइनस 1 सो दैट माइनस 1 मेक इट माइनस सो इन दिस केस सीपीआर One CP is zero, the other one is four, and the next is five as well. But the problem is five, not problem, uh, five is also the end point as well, you see there. Okay, so five is also the end point, so it's okay, it doesn't matter. So now we, if you draw a sign pattern for it, what would we do? You will start from left, but you will stop here. That's a block for you. We are having four here, and we are zero somewhere here. Okay, we may draw a dotted line, a block line, whatever. Up to Marzi. So first, we take sine of uh, x. And you know x is negative to the left of zero and positive to the right of zero. Zen Marai five ke aage am nahi jayenge, yahi pe stop karenge. That's the point in case of one sided a half infinite intervals. Or four minus x. It is positive uh, to the left while negative to the right. We take product of this. Negative, 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 positive, positive, and then negative. Okay, so you see it is uh, decreasing here, increasing here, increasing here, decreasing here, and decreasing here. Okay, and then you see. Uh, we are having local max here, min, sorry, local max here and local min here as well. At the end point, we also consider either it's minimum or maximum. Now, what about absolute? Do we have absolute max in this case? The answer is yes. Uh, sorry, do we have absolute max or min? You see, it is to the left, it is negative. We don't say anything about the right. If the left is negative, what do we have? 
we are having absolute minimum so in this case we have absolute minimum this is minimum local minimum here we have local max and here we have also local min so we are have having absolute minimum only absolute minimum keeping in mind there will be no absolute max यहां पर अक्सर स्टूडेंट ये मिस्टेक कर जाते हैं वो कहते हैं भाई इधर भी नेगेटिव है और इधर भी नेगेटिव है नहीं ये इधर उधर नेगेटिव की फिर हम बात नहीं करेंगे जब वन एंड क्लोज होता है ना फिर उस केस में हम सिर्फ एक ही साइड पे डिसीजन करते हैं मेक डिसीजन ओनली ऑन वन साइड ऑफ द इंटरवल लेन ओके तो इन दिस केस एब्सोल्यूट मिनिमम एंड दैट विल बी एमंग वन ऑफ द मिनिमम मिनिमम कहां कहां पे जीरो पे है और फाइव पे है जीरो पे फंक्शन की वैल्यू क्या है जीरो है और फाइव पे फंक्शन की वैल्यू क्या है वो भी जीरो है इसका मतलब ये है कि जो एब्सोल्यूट मिन है दैट इज एंड इज एट एक्स इक्वल टू दोनों जो आ रहे हैं जीरो Five, because we are getting same value at zero and five. It is not necessary that all the time we will be having same value. ठीक है? तो यहाँ पर हमें interval जो था, it was not defined, it was not mentioned that you do in this one. But from the function we found the domain and we see that interval in this case is from minus infinity to five. the same thing in question uh, 41 to 452 you see you are given intervals so 41 we have the same thing what we had in this case ab yahan par domain ki baat nahi ho rahi yahan par aapko already interval diye hue hain right so you identify the functions local extreme values in the in given domain and which of them are absolute so we will do exactly the same what i have explained here while in question 49 Question fifty one and fifty two, they are the same as we have done in exercise. Uh, I think four point one. The interval आपको दिए हुए हैं. इसी interval में आपने उसकी values find करनी है. Extreme values और फिर उनको pick करना है. I hope you could do that. If you got any question, you can ask me sometime. Okay, now we come we come towards uh, applied optimization problem. the concept is exactly same right the only difference is you would first find function for the given shape or jo bhi keh rahe hain apne optimal values find karni hai the example one is saying an open an open top box is to be made by cutting small congruent squares from 12 by 12 sheets and then uh, bending up the sides how large should the squares cut from the corners to be made okay so that's question number 1 uh, of the book it says that we have to uh, maximize the length sorry the the area I don't know. Let me open the book first. I didn't copy the question from there. Yeah, so this is the question. If you see, I'm doing few questions from here. The rest you will do yourself. 
Question one is saying, what is the smallest perimeter possible for a rectangle whose area is 16 inches square? And what will be the dimension? So this is solved here. If we uh, check that one, we assume that L and W be the length and width, right? And then uh, we say area of rectangle is given that is 16. From here, we can find W is equal to 16 by L. Now, perimeter is defined as 2 times L plus W. I hope you know this thing. Replacing W by 16 by L from there. And then we find its derivative equated to 0. To get 2 into 1 minus 16 by L square is equal to 0 gives you L square is equal to 16. Or L is equal to plus minus 4, but we don't uh, take minus 4 because length is never negative. And W is equal to 16 by L. So therefore, for... Uh, length and width to be same it means square the square will have maximum area right the next question is uh, if parameter is given that is eight what should be the maximum area then right if parameter is eight what should be the maximum area so the concept is exactly the same p is equal to eight two into l plus w that is equal to 8 and then dividing by 2 to get L equal to 4 minus W. Now we have area is e what? That is L into W, putting value of L there, and then equating A dash 0 to get W is equal to 2. W is equal to 2 and then L is also equal to 2. If you take length and width, both are 2, right? The parameter will be 8 while the way area will be maximum in this case. Baki two dimensions will not be area in this maximum. Okay. In question three, it says that uh, a rectangle is, is inscribed in an isosceles triangle, right triangle, keeping in mind, whose hypotenuse is two meters long, two units long. Right? The hypotenuse is on the x-axis, keeping in mind. Because the right angle is at B, which is on the Y axis. Then it says express the Y coordinate of P in terms of X. Express the area of the rectangle in terms of X. And what is the largest area the rectangle can have? And then again, what are the dimensions? Right. So here you see that uh, this is Y. This angle is 45. From 0 to this point A, is length is 1. So this length and the triangle APX in this triangle, if you see, this length will be 1 minus X. And this is why the applying tangent 45 in the right angle triangle, that is perpendicular by base. So we have tangent 45 Y by 1 minus X. Tangent 45 is 1, so we get Y is equal to 1 minus X. Therefore, coordinates of this Y coordinate is what? It is 1 minus X. Now, what about the area of this rectangle? You see length of the rectangle is x from here and x from here. So that will be 2x. And this height is 1 minus x. So it will be 2x into 1 minus x. And to maximize the area, what do we do? We differentiate it and equate that to 0. So that is 2 minus 4x is equal to 0 implies x equal to 1 by 2. If you take x equal to 1 by 2 at the middle of this, you will get a rectangle which has a maximum area. A rectangle has its base on the s-axis, x-axis, and its upper two vertices on the parabola, y is equal to 12 minus x square. What is the largest area the rectangle can have, and what are its dimensions? So if we approximately draw that parabola, it is 12 minus x square. So this point will be, Okay, so this point will be here, that will be 12. So this is basically graph of minus x square, which is 12 units shifted upward. Okay, and we are again the same job with Pichle's meta. I am a rectangle ko inscribe kar rahe hai. Hai? 0 se le kar x tak idhar le rahe hai, 0 tak minus x ho jayega. So this total length is 2x. Now this point is x, so a point on the parabola will be 12 minus x square because function for parabola is 12 minus x square. It's given there. So this length is 2x while width is 12 minus x square. The area of this rectangle will be 2x into 12 minus x square. 
where x is between minus 2 under root 3 to 2 under root 3. Keep keeping this in mind. Ab iske baad derivative lekar 0 ke barabar put karenge. I hope you can do that. I left this for you. You can do that here. You would find first a dash. Equate that to 0. So in this case, you see derivative will be uh, 24 minus uh, 4x. What? It is 24x minus 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 x cubed. That is 6x square is equal to 0. And that will give you basically x square is equal to 4. implies x is equal to 2 because the uh, length cannot be negative so we take only x equal to 2 so x equal to 2 the area will be rectangle will be maximum so i hope you could do that yourself you are planning to make an open rectangular box from an uh, 8 inch by 15 inch piece of cardboard by cutting congruent squares from the corners and folding up the sides. What are the dimensions of the box of largest volume you can make this way? And what are what is its volume? So what is your example with uh, here? In 6 say you are planning to close off a corner of a first quadrant with a line segment having 20 units length, running from A to 0 and 0 to B. Show that the area of triangle enclosed by the segment is largest when A is equal to B. Okay, so you see we, we are simply considering a first quadrant that is cut by cut by a line. Let me have a laser here. This is a line of 20 length and this is point A0, this is point 0B on x, y axis and x axis. So we are having a right angle triangle. So this length will be A, this length will be B. This is 20. So we apply Pythagorean law, which is A square plus B square is equal to 20 square. So B is equal to under 400 minus A square. And now area of a triangle is right angle triangle is what? That is half base into perpendicular. So A into B, putting the value of B there and then finding its derivative equate to zero to get the value of A and B. Both will be same. That will give you what? That will give you maximum area of the triangle. In question seven, say the best fencing plan, a rectangular uh, plot of uh, farmland will be bounded on one side by a river and on the other three sides by a single strand electric fence. With 800 meter of wire at your disposal, what is the largest area you can enclose? Okay, now uh, parameter is given that is 800 meter. You can keeping in mind that this case map ko ek end me wo wire nahi laga na. So agar aap figure ko dekh lein, to ek side pe river hai, to ye isme shamil nahi hoga. Yahan par aapne wire nahi laga na. ठीक है, तो आपने एक rectangular shape यूँ बनाना है, इसमें ये length x है, ये length x है और ये y होगा. Right? So parameter is given that is 2x plus y, which is 800. From here we can write y is equal to 800 minus 2x. And what about the area then? which is x into y, y value put kare, under multiply kare, derivative 0 ke barabar le le, you get the value of y and corresponding value of x, uh, sorry, you get the value of x and then corresponding value of y, uh, which will be the dimension, jo ke aapke paas maximum area aega. Sir, ye graph given hoga? Uh, Nahi, graph, ab dekhe, uh, midterm exam to aapka shayad take home exam hoga to graph aap, थोड़ा सा चाय पीते हुए कर सकते ड्रा कर सकते हैं ना इट्स क्लियर फॉर्म इट यू सी अ रेक्टेंगुलर प्लॉट ऑफ फॉर्म लैंड विल बी बाउंडेड ऑन वन साइड बाय अ रिवर तो एक साइड तो रिवर पे आ गया एंड द अदर थ्री साइड्स बाय अ सिंगल स्ट्रेंड इलेक्ट्रिक फेंस रेक्टेंगल है और आपने तीन साइड्स को कवर करना है तो दो साइड तो सेम आएंगे उसमें ऑटोमेटिकली रेक्टेंगल है और एक का साइड जो रिवर के साथ हो जाएगा तो वी सिंपल हैव एक्स एक्स एंड वाई तो बुक में ये गिवन नहीं है तो आपने खुद ड्रा करना है इसको 
Next one is saying the shortest fence of 216 meter square rectangular P patch is to be enclosed by a fence. Now this again rectangular hai, then bana hai, aur iska jo area hai, wo given hai. Area is what? That is 216 meter square. Aage baaz aara sunne. And divided into two equal parts by another fence parallel to one of the sides. Beech mein ek aur aapne fence laga le, sada figure se aapne zara aapko aara hai. Figure maine draw kiya ho isme, so aapko figure given nahi hoga. What dimensions for the outer rectangle will require the smallest total length of fence? And how much fence will it need it? Okay. So in this case, you see that uh, you will divide that into x and x, or you can take x as a whole. So one is x by 2, x by 2. It's up to you. You want Right? You can take this one as x by 2, this x by 2, and total is what? That is x. Or you can take x. Just to avoid fractions, we are taking x and x. You can take this one as well. Yeah, French have been clear. Nahi yahan pe hai, yahan pe hai. Ye line up yahan bhi draw kar sakte hai aise. Aur isko aap y or y le sakte hai. It doesn't matter. It could, could be in either direction. Okay. So we are having 2x length this one, 2x length this one. And this is y. The area is what? That is length into width. So that is 2x multiplied by y, which is given as 216. From here, you would simply find y is equal to 216 by 2x. And what about the perimeter now? Perimeter is what? X plus X plus X plus X, 4X. Y plus Y plus Y is 3Y. Because we are having three lengths now. So that is 4X plus 3Y. And putting the value of Y there, you get something this like this. And then differentiate derivative equal to 0 and that will get solution. But it is a simple math. So this is not something that happens. Okay. If you are designing a tank, your iron works has contracted to design a, uh, and build a 500 feet cube square base open top rectangular steel holding tank for a paper company. This volume is given. This volume is 500 feet cube. But there is information given that you have to make a rectangular cube, but you have to open top and open it. You have to use any material. Use nahi karna hai. Uska square jo hai, that is. Uh, base to that is square. Okay, the tank is to be made by welding thin stainless steel plates together along their edges. As the production engineer, your job is to find dimensions for the base and height that will make the tank weights as little as possible. So, what dimension do you you tell the shop to use? And briefly briefly describe how you took weight into account. Okay, so what do we do? We need to minimize this weight function. Uh, T into S, where S is the surface area and T is the thickness of the steel wall in this case. Now, surface area is what you see. If, look in the diagram. This part is open. Base is X and X because base is square and length, let's suppose we take it Y. So, area of the base is what? That is X square. And area of each wall will be X into Y. So, there are four walls. We are not taking the top that is open. Right? So, surface area will be four. That is four times xy plus the base which is x square and volume will be what that is length width and height so x into x into y that is x square y so we are using these things here together you can simply do it by ourselves the rest is straightforward then once you define surface area is s equal to x square plus 4xy while volume is given is 500 feet cube so we can find y from there putting y there in this function and then putting this is here so we have W is equal to two t times x square plus 200, 2000 by x. Okay, by putting that value in there, and <clears throat> we simply uh, differentiate it, equate that to zero to find the critical point, which is obviously 10. I hope you could do that. But one for double derivative positive will give you the minimum. So therefore, the minimum value at x equal to 10. Uh, let me uh, receive a call. Fir baat mein it's okay. Is that right? So uh, then we move to our chapter number eight, which I'm just getting through it. So uh, the next part is uh, straightforward. That is integration. Uh, you may have one question in, in the exam possibly it's not uh, compulsory that you will get a question 
regarding integration. It's a simple integration technique. It's not a definite integral. It's nothing to do with the area. It's not to do with volume. That will be discussed in next lecture then, after midterm, obviously. So integration uh, in exercise 8.1, it's a very basic integration techniques. You know how to find it. In 8.2, we are having integration by parts. OK? These are the, some questions. Integration by parts, you know that. And some more questions from uh, exercise in the book. And then there are some integral, uh, trigonometric integrals. That is uh, in exercise, uh, I think, uh, 8 point something, 8.3. OK. So you will do these uh, exercises. If you got any problem, you can discuss with me. I, I'm explaining a bit uh, in uh, trigonometric integrals with higher powers, obviously. If you have sine x or cos x, tangent x, secant x, you know, integrals of all these uh, trigonometric functions. But if you have sine square x, uh, sine cube x, sine power 4x, uh, something like that. So how do we do the, those, those integrals? I mean, you may have sine square into cos cube x and et cetera. The same thing for tangent as well, higher powers of tangent as well. So how do we do that? Let's suppose we have uh, this uh, example. It's very state power forward simple example. Uh, you see, we are having sine cube x and cos square x. What would you do if one of the powers is odd, right? One of the powers is odd. Like in this case, we have sine cube x. She so would express sine cube as sine square and sine x, right? Sine square and sine x here. This is sine square and sine x. So, jis mein odd power hoga, usi ko apne convert karna hota hai. And then what do we do? We convert this sine square into cos as well by replacing sine square x is equal to one minus cos square x. And when you do that, you see you get 1 minus cos square x into cos square x. Forget about this d cos x, you will be in, uh, in trouble what, what is going on. You, what you do, you would simply make a substitution and you will take u is equal to directly, that is cos x. And then this gives you du is equal to minus sine x into cos x, minus sine x into dx. Okay, and then you put value in this function here directly, one minus u square, you see, into u square, and uh, that is minus sine x into dx, you see this one, you can make this plus, and then it become minus. So you see sine x into dx is minus du, and then simply applying power rule to integrate this one, and then applying what? Uh, putting value of u back. बहुत आसान लेकिन जेन में ये रख लें कि अगर आपके पास दोनों में से कोई एक क्या हो आठ पावर हो तो उसे आप साइन एक्स या कॉज एक्स एक पावर को अलग करें और बाकी जो रहता है उसको आप अकॉर्डिंगली मल्टीप्लाई करते हैं या कोई मैक्सिमम पावर लेते हैं लेट सपोज अगर आपके पास यूं है इफ यू हैव साइन फाइव एक्स ओनली साइन फाइव एक्स इंटीग्रल ऑफ साइन फाइव एक्स तो वट वुड यू डू यू विल राइट दिस एज integral sin 4x into sin x, right? The same thing for cos as well, if you have cos 5x or something. So you will do that, uh, you will write this one as sin square x whole square into sin x And then you would replace this by what? By 1 minus cos square. And by making substitution, as I explained earlier, you will take this one as u to get 1 minus u square. 
and then whole square. And this will become again the same thing minus du. As we have done in the previous case that uh, u is equal to cos x, where u is equal to cos x. So minus du will be obviously equal to sin x into dx. Open the square, apply power rule, you will get simple integral and replace back it by cos x. They can shut this may ke art power ho. Okay, there must be art power. Okay. What happens if you have even power? That's what I've done. Cos 5x can be done in a similar way. Okay. If we have even powers, both even power of you have one function which has even power. So what would you do? We have, uh, if you remember, formulas that sine, trigonometric formulas, sine square is equal to 1 minus cos 2x. divided by 2 while cos x cos square x is equal to this is 1 plus cos 2x divided by 2 so whenever both powers are even if one is odd, then you will go for the previous case. But if both are even, or if you have only one function with even power, you would use these formulas. You see here, we replace sine square with what? With 1 minus cos 2x by 2. We replace cos square with 1 plus cos 2x, and then we get whole square. Because you would write cos 4x as cos square x and then square. Cos square and then square All right and then opening this square again again we get square here we would replace this square by again the same formula we have cube here so this will be done by the odd power method okay we will do this uh, separately this one separately and this one separately to get this integral so general concept even power as you would convert that into multiple of angle if you have power, then you will have to do it in the same way. Okay, what about uh, integral of higher powers of tangent x? You know that. What is integral of tangent square x? So we don't have direct integration of tangent square, so we first convert that into secant we can write tangent square as secant square x minus 1 okay and then integral of secant square is tangent x and integral of 1 is x so integral of tangent square is tangent x minus x if we have fourth power we write that as tangent square into tangent square. Okay. And then you convert one tangent square as secant square x minus one. And then you get what tangent square x into secant square x. Okay. And you see derivative of tangent is present there. And as tangent square can be directly written by replaced by tangent x minus x is that done there. And then you can have this integration. Okay, what about secant cube x? So secant cube x, uh, that's the odd power of secant. We do it by using integration by parts. Even power asan hai. If we have simply secant, integral of secant x for first power, 
I hope everybody remember that from your FSC right? It is log of secant x plus tangent x. Okay. While we have a secant square x, it's simple directly we write that as tangent x. You know this integral. Secant cube me per masla aata hai. Even, uh, even powers are okay. If you take secant 4x dx, so we could write that as. Uh, secant square x into secant square x. The first secant square will be replaced with a tangent. That is 1 plus tangent square. Into secant square x. And then we replace what? We replace u with tangent x. And then I'm putting this value here to get a very simple integration. If we have secant power 6x, we do a secant 4x into secant square. Then we take it secant square whole cube and so on. Maybe square first and then cube and so on. So even power asana. The odd power, we will do what? If we have secant cube x, we will take that as secant square x into secant x. You would write this in this form. Secant x into secant square x. And then by using integration by parts, this will be taken as first function, this is second function. This is u and this is v. So we get at the end this integral. If you apply integration by parts. Okay, so these are some integration. Uh, so you check यहाँ पर फिर वो मल्टीपल ऑफ एंगल्स हैं मल्टीपल ऑफ एंगल्स का मतलब अगर आप फाइंड करना चाहें ये सिंपल फार्मूलाज आपने पढ़े एफ एस सी में इफ समी आज की वर्ड इज इंटीग्रल ऑफ कॉस टू एक्स इन टू कॉस थ्री एक्स इफ यू आर हैविंग डिफरेंट मल्टीपल ऑफ एंगल्स इफ मल्टीपल ऑफ एंगल्स आर सेम देन इट्स ओके Okay, so what do we do? We multiply and divide by 2 and converting CC into either it is basically converted into C plus, you see this one, cos MX into sine NX, we have cos M minus NX plus cos M plus NX. If we have sine MX as cos NX, so we have this one. And if we have sine MX and sine NX, we have this one. And then integral of these are very straightforward and simple. Okay, so do questions in exercise uh, 8.3. Yeah, so uh, that's it before midterm. If you have any question. So here, zero eight point three. Our uh, integral by parts question is. Eight point eight point one, eight point two, eight point three. I have told you, right? Which I mentioned in lecture. Okay. Sir. Yeah. So next week, I think there is a midterm exam. You must be checking your uh, maybe class or your email all the time. And you should know about the <clears throat> time of your midterm paper. Right? Uh, I may take one quiz for five marks. And that will be on the spot quiz. And uh, 15 marks will be take-home exam. It might be 
four to five possibly uh, i'm not sure at this moment that will be mentioned in in the in the paper usme mention hoga jis tarah assignment mein diya tha waise paper bhi hoga to aapko paper wahan pe online aa jayegi fir aap paper solve karke usko aapne online hi submit karna hai jis tarah se aapne assignment submit kiya hua assignment number 1 theek hai to usme aapko questions diye honge aap ghar mein solve karenge zen mein rahe assignment bhi aap mein se baad student ne late submit kiya hai अगर आपके पेपर भी लेट सबमिट होगा बिकॉज में ड्यू टाइम होगा ड्यू डेट और ड्यू टाइम होगा उस टाइम से आपका एक मिनट भी लेट हो गया तो आपको उस पेपर के मार्क्स नहीं मिलेंगे बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज 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 बेसिकली ऑनलाइन राइट सो यू यू मस्ट सबमिट योर पेपर इन टाइम सर कभी कभार नेटवर्क का प्रॉब्लम हो जाता है अपलोड नहीं होता टाइम आपको मिलेगा ना ऐसा तो नहीं कि आपको हम दो घंटे देंगे मैं आपको थोड़ा सा ज्यादा टाइम दूंगा it might be 5 to 6 hours so even when you do that so you should uh, upload that in time theek hai na so i said now ki fir aap late kare aur fir yahan pe aapki evaluation na ho aapke marks na ho to fir masla hoga you must be very careful at least aap ye kar le ke exam ke dauran uh, aap uh, kahin pe jaye jahan pe uh, wifi wagaira maujood ho ya मतलब अगर आप 3G, 4G यूज करें तो ऐसी जगह पे जाएं जहां पे नेटवर्क बहुत ज्यादा फास्ट हो ठीक है ना इसमें फिर इस तरह ना हो कि आप कहे नेट नहीं था वगैरह 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 इस तरह चीजें फिर क्लास में इट्स ओके लेकिन एग्जाम में फिर ये चीज इट मस्ट बी वेरी सीरियस थिंग ओके क्वेश्चन तो कीप चेकिंग यूर क्लास ऑल द टाइम जितना जल्दी आपको 